Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here today on a Friday to continue talking about the book of Leviticus. Now, up to this point, we've talked about some of the do's and don'ts that come out of the book, some of the reasons for the book. And today I want to start another week, actually, I'll start on Friday, I'll continue next week, talking about the festivals in Old Testament Jerusalem that we find recorded here in the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. Now, according to the rules, if you will, there are seven different festivals that each Hebrew male had to participate in. Now, they are aligned around the agricultural year, actually, and they're combined so that you do all seven in just three trips. So you do, what's it, one, two, you do three, and then one, and then three more, and you finish up the year. So that's what we find talked about in Leviticus 23. And each day I'll talk about another festival. But today, let's look at the beginning of this. We find it in the first verse, not surprisingly, Leviticus chapter 23. The Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. These are the Lord's appointed festivals, which you are to proclaim as official days for holy assemblies. Now let's stop there a second. What are the festivals? Well, they are a time that's set aside in the year for the Hebrews to think about God and to think about their relationship with God and to do certain things at certain times to, to minimize or to find a way to cover Sin. You see, the Hebrews had the same problem you and I have. We sin, even if we don't want to. There's intentional sin and unintentional sin, and we all do that. Maybe we don't want to do that, but we still do that. So there has to be a way to minimize the damage done by the sin to man's relationship to God. Now, here in the New Testament, and as post-Jesus days, we know that his sacrifice, his death, covered the sin. But before that, there had to be other ways to do it. And that's what the festivals were all about. They were a guiding principle of the relationship between you and your God. And maybe today we ought to have something like Maybe we ought to think about these things. Now, I'm not much into liturgy and liturgical practices, and I'm not suggesting that our church or any other church should have to do that. But there, there is a good thing about taking some time intentionally and celebrating in various ways our relationship with God. So let's continue reading here and see what we find. Verse 3, you have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of complete rest, an official day for holy assembly. It's the Lord's Sabbath day, and it must be observed wherever you live. So we have the Sabbath, which in the Old Testament time was Saturday. The Christian church celebrates it as Sunday. This is the regular day of worship. But in addition to that, there's something else. And so what we find in verse 4, in addition to the Sabbath, these are the Lord's appointed festivals, the holy days for holy assembly that are to be celebrated at their proper time each year. So let me give you a quick overview, and I'll talk more about each one of them next week. The first one that comes up, now remember, this follows the agricultural year, and it starts in what we call Easter. Um, the, so we're talking about, you know, March, April is period of time. So it starts out with the Passover and the festival of the unleavened bread. 
And this happens, as I said, during what we call communion. This was to remember, as the people of Israel remember the night that the angel of death passed over the houses of Israel. And so that's what delivered them. That last event is what allowed or forced, whichever way you want to look at it, Pharaoh to say that Hebrews could leave. And they're supposed to celebrate that, along with the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which comes from that ceremony, because in those days they didn't have time to prepare the bread the way they normally would, so they had to use unleavened bread. Then we come to what's known as the celebration of the harvest or first fruits. This again, along the agricultural calendar, would be when you planted your crops and the first ones you got out. And there's specific reasons here and rituals it talks about. We'll get into that too. But here we see God saying that you should dedicate the first of what you get. Not the last, not some portion, but the very first, in recognition that he's the one that's given it to you. And then we go on to the festival of the harvest. <clears throat> and this has come to the time we call Pentecost. This would be when the crops are now harvested or begin the harvest. And here it tells us where to leave some for the poor. We're not supposed to just take everything, but we're supposed to remember it is God who has given it to us. Now, you go through the summer, you come to the fall, and you come to the last three festivals. Begins at what's known as Rosh Hashanah, which is the civil beginning of a new year in the Hebrew calendar, or the festival of trumpets. This is when trumpets are played. And each day, for a specific number of days, we'll talk about that, you are to examine yourself and see how well you have lived up to your promises to God. The next part of this is the Day of Atonement called Yom Kippur. And this is the highest of all of the religious days in ancient Israel, still today in modern Israel. Now, they don't celebrate it the same way because they don't have the temple to do it. But this was when the two goats were, were collected and one was sacrificed and the other was set free to show the, the, the blood that covers the sin and the freedom from the sin when the goat, goat disappeared over the horizon. And then after that one comes the festival of uh, shelters or the tabernacles or the festival of booths. And here's where you take a few days and you celebrate that you're now free from sin. You have to build a little house, you're supposed to live in it for during the daytime. It's not supposed to have a roof so you can see the sky. We talk about that too. But at the end of the sacrifice for sin, we celebrate the goodness of God. And what we see in these festivals is a year-long approach to remembering God. Maybe that's something you and I need. Well, we have it with Christmas and Easter, maybe Thanksgiving, um, maybe Pentecost. But most churches don't make a really great big deal out of those, except maybe Christmas and Easter. And that's gotten very secularized in our culture. But what God's trying to tell the Hebrews here in Leviticus 23 is throughout the year, take time. And remember who God is and remember what God has done for you. I think that's a good plan. You might try it. I invite you to think about it. And thanks so much for listening this week. Like I said, I'll be back next week. I'll talk about these festivals. But in the meantime, if there's something you need that we can help you with, let us know. We'll do everything we can as fast as we can to help meet your need. We really mean it. So I hope you have a really, really great, wonderful weekend. Come back Monday, and I'll share some more. God bless you. Take care.